Hello and welcome to a new episode of uh, SketchUp.us, SketchUp for us. Uh, today we'll talk about arches, how uh, this uh, arch is actually at the base of the architecture. It's uh, something magic about it and uh, there are some uh, tricks and uh, things which uh, is good to know. Um, as uh, probably everybody knows, uh, uh, since uh, antiquity, the, even uh, the Egyptian, it looked like uh, they uh, knew stuff about the arches, but uh, the Roman uh, and the uh, Greek uh, architecture actually, uh, they start using uh, the arches uh, in more frequent way, especially the Roman architecture. Uh, so uh, the basic arch uh, in uh, construction in general, uh, it's spanning from one side to another. Uh, and this is the typical arch, uh, so call it uh, semicircular arch. The reason why it's semicircular is basically you have a circle. So, you know, you draw a circle here, you're gonna see is the perfect uh, perfect arch. Uh, as height that can uh, vary uh, could be uh, starting from uh, the base of uh, the arch, something like this. Uh, in uh, different buildings, that is where usually it's starting uh, the arch. But if you want to have uh, high volts and things like that, uh, uh, the arch can uh, start actually lower, so it's uh, it's giving you a sensation of uh, being a tall arch. Uh, that is very characteristic for the Romanesque uh, type and uh, Christian Orthodox uh, area. Basically, everything which is in Eastern Europe, uh, they have this as a base of the structure, especially the Romanesque, and uh, that is a very common style in architecture especially. Um, you can have also uh, the segmental arch. The segmental arch is actually uh, an arch that have actually the sides cut. So it would be something like that. Uh, so it's a segment of, ar of an arch uh, that uh, it's uh, very often in architecture, especially in the colonial style. Uh, you're gonna see this uh, segmental arch uh, use it very often, especially on the dormers and on the top of the roofs. Now, uh, during the time around uh, 1000 uh, uh, AD, uh, the Gothic uh, style appeared. And uh, the biggest difference and actually the marvelous uh, engineering behind is that an arch could be actually uh, moved over the inside and you have uh, something which uh, it's uh, call it more like a, a, a vault type of thing. Uh, this particular one it's actually called it lancet arch. Um, it is only a part of the arch sort of a segmental arch but uh, in a different uh, way basically you have two arches intersected and at the intersection you obtain this uh, this arch which has got a pointy arch uh, it's got a point here and that gives a lot of flexibility especially in architecture um, this particular one if you look uh, to it it's actually equilateral that means the center of the arch, uh, center of the circle is actually where the arch is starting, but you can have the circle toward the outside and that is going to give you a high pointed uh, lancet uh, type uh, of arch. So this is higher, then this is very narrow and pointy, or you can have the, the center of the uh, circles of the arches inside uh, of uh, the shape of the arch and uh, this uh, this particular uh, type which you have it uh, with the uh, centrals inside they call it drop it arch and the reason why you, you can see it this is the average for the equilateral 
the lancet one is very tall, so uh, the tip of the arch is actually very high. This one is actually below this one, and it's called it dropped. So that that is a dropped type of arch. Now, when this is uh, used, uh, just imagine that actually we can draw a line here and a line here, and we're going to obtain uh, something more like this. So. Uh, if uh, we have a rectangle like that and a rectangle like this, basically you're gonna have an open uh, area and uh, that particular uh, type of arch, if you add uh, another arch here, is gonna, it's gonna become elliptical basically. So that is called it elliptical arches. Uh, basically it's, it's an arch which is uh, move it and twist it on one side. It's an elongated type of arch. Uh, in this particular case, if you do that, of course, you're gonna have uh, this arch here with the center there, this arch here with the center here, and the elliptical, which is over there. So therefore, you're gonna have actually three segments of the uh, circles. Yeah, one here, one here, so two on the sides, and the elliptical, which is a big round one. So that used three points. Uh, now, there are also different uh, other type of arches which are using uh, one point, three points, or two points, uh, or even four points, which is the last arch, which is here, is a normal arch. Uh, so this type here, where uh, actually the arch, actually the circle, continues a little bit inside. This is uh, very typical for more Bauer or more architecture, the referenciation. Um, and this, uh, this theoretically, it's uh, call it a round uh, horseshoe arch because it's looking like a horseshoe. Now, when, uh, when that gets pointed in the sense that, uh, as you can see here, it's only a circle, basically. It's, uh, oops, let's uh, skip from this one. And a circle so basically it's a circle here like that uh, now if that uh, radius is changed and it's using uh, two points and therefore that circle gets changed it that arch particular gets changed in a let's say a, a pointed type of arch that is gonna become something like this and that is going uh, call it pointed horseshoe arch. Uh, now, in this particular case, uh, you have the circle, and again, there are three points. Yeah, one for the bottom arches on the sides, one here and one here, and the two on the top, yeah, this one and this one. So there are three points of construction for the arches. Same uh, uh, way you can have uh, a more uh, complex type of arch, uh, which is this one here. Uh, this is actually a uh, cuspid or so-called trefoil also because like three parts and trefoil like a, like a lip. Uh, this one is having those two arches here, one here and one here, you can see them. And of course on the top it's an equilateral type of arch like this one. And the, again, this one can be bigger, can be smaller. Uh, but the, the obvious shape, very easily recognize it, is actually divided in three. Uh, again, very often used in Gothic architecture. Uh, and this one, if the arch up top is uh, having actually the segments uh, rotated or mirror it toward the inside, we're going to have this type actually. So. This basically, the, the arch itself, it's on the other direction. Uh, that is gonna create us the famous OG, as it's called it, for, uh, for the actual ar architectural term. And that again is very often find, find it in uh, the Gothic architecture. And the last one, uh, uh, it's the Norman arch. Uh, same uh, same thing. There are four points. One uh, one for the arches here. So basically, this one here, and uh, same uh, same one on the other direction. And uh, the 
two big uh, big arches here they are having the lower points as you can see the points are lower for those arches and those ones are on the sides uh, so basically four points for this type of arch which is uh, call it four centered arch but it's very typical for the Norman architecture so that that it's uh, very uh, used uh, in England if you go in a different uh, Gothic architecture in England they found this type of arches so uh, I think it's uh, it's interesting at least to see the evolution basically from a circular uh, semicircular arch the typical Roman arch uh, how that got uh, uh, let's say uh, explored and during the time you see the evolution in architecture and again you can use those arches uh, when you want to trace and do some uh, gothic uh, windows and uh, some very interesting uh, doors or entryways in 3d models it's good to know the logic behind and how those particular arches they were built uh, they are very easy and fast to build uh, in 3d as long as you know exactly the logic, uh, where are the center for the arches and how those arches get intersected in order to obtain the uh, architectural shape and the design which you are looking for. All right, I hope uh, this is useful. Thanks uh, for uh, watching, feel free to subscribe. And uh, if you have any comment, let me know and we're gonna answer to your questions. Thank you.